hello guys welcome to the channel my name is femi john and in this video i'm going to be teaching you how to create an image slider just like this this is a very simple and easy design to create um this is all possible with the help of interactive components and the little animation please don't forget to like share subscribe and turn on the notification bell so you get notified on my next video the first thing I'm going to do is to create a new design file. I'm going to choose a frame. I'm going to select the desktop frame. I'm also going to go ahead to reduce the height of the frame. The next thing I'm going to do is to create a basic structure of a navigation bar which contains our font ID which is the logo and also the menu items. These are not really the main focus of the video, so I'm just going to make this part of the video a lot faster and I'm just going to skip to the part where we start working with the carousel images. I have also added the sample header text title. Um, the next thing I want to do is to bring in our images. I'm going to be using a plugin called Unsplash but I don't have it so I'm just going to go ahead and install it. If you already do have Unsplash on your, as a plugin on your Figma board then you can just go ahead and use it but if you don't you come to the Figma plugin communities and install it. So I'm just going to go back to our ad board and I'm going to right click go to plugins and click on the installed Unsplash plugin. So I'm just going to select a number of images here from the option here. Um, you can of course select the images of your choice. I'm just going to be picking these specific images because that's what I used for the final product. After selecting all the images I want, I'm just going to close the Unsplash plugin and I'm going to rearrange them. The next thing I'm going to do, I just need four images because it's going to be a carousel slider of four images. So I just need four images. I'm going to go ahead to remove two images out of the six options I have. So I'm left with just four images. I'm also going to go ahead to resize the images so they fit the exact size of the desktop frame we are using, which is 1440 by 800. But depending on the frame you are using, the height and width will definitely vary so make sure to use the specific height and width of the desktop frame you're using for all your images so that you can have a complete cover effect for the images The next thing I'm going to do is to arrange my images in the sequence I want them to slide in. So I'm just going to arrange them at the top and I'm going to select all the images and align them properly. I'm going to align them together with no spacing between them. Next, I want to group all selected images, right click on the group and frame selection. I'm also going to reduce the width of this. I'm also going to clip its content and I'm going to make it a component. Then I'm going to create a variant for this component. I'm actually going to create five other variants but for this second variant I'm going to click on the group item and I'm going to set the y axis to a minus 1440. This can vary depending on the width of your desktop frame or the width of your image. I'm going to do the same thing for the third variant. I'm going to click on the on variant 3 from the layers panel and I'm going to click on the group and I'm also going to go to the X axis and change the X axis to a minus 2,880. 
I'm going to repeat the same pattern for the third and fourth variants. I'm going to keep subtracting 1440 from each of the variants till I get to the fourth variant. Or basically, just keep subtracting the width of your image slider container to get your actual value. After I'm done repositioning each group in the variants to display the selected image we want, the next thing I'm going to do is to rename our components and I'm going to do a quick interaction between the variants. For the first interaction from the default variants to the first variants, I'm going to give it an after delay of 3 milliseconds. And I'm going to set it to Smart Animate. I'm going to repeat the same, um, the same figures for the second and third interaction. And I'm going to repeat the fourth variant back to the first variant. After doing this, the next thing I want to do is to preview our prototype. To do that, I'm going to go to the asset panel and I'm going to drag in the instance of our components into our artboard. I'm also going to fit it into the desktop frame we are using for our home screen and I'm going to position it at the bottom of the layer so that other contents can come above it. I'm going to click on the play icon to play the prototype. So we see what it is. As you can see, the transitions between these variants are really fast. That means we need to increase the time of the after delay and also the transition time of the smart animate. I also want to create more contrast between the text and the background images so I'm going to create a dark overlay on the background images and I'm going to use a light text. Now there's a particular property I want all the groups in the variants to have. The best thing to do would be to create a base component. Before then I'm going to add a dark overlay on the images by simply adding a solid black to the fill and reducing its opacity to 60% and I'm also going to make it its own component. After that, I'm going to go ahead to use the paste to replace function to replace the instance of the group in every single variant of the component. I hope you guys are really understanding this. I'm also going to repeat the first image in the base component as the last image. So now we are going to be having 5 images in the group. This is because I want to create a smooth transition between the last image and the first image. And this is also the good thing about having a base component. Now this is also going to take effect on all the images in our variants. So we can add the fifth variant, which we are going to um, reposition it to show the last image. I'm also going to go ahead and add the prototype to the last variant um, so that we can transition from our last variant to our first variant in an instant transition rather than a smart animate. After completely setting the interactions between the variants in our component, 
The next thing to do would be to bring the instance of our component back into our board. But at this time, I would like to change the feel of the text for both the navigation and the and the header text. So this is it guys, a simple sliding animation in Figma. But as you can notice in the final design, I also did a little animation on the header, title and subtitle text. So if you're also interested in how I made that, please stick around till the end of the video. So here I have the sample text I'll be using. And basically what I want to do is change the header and subtitle text on the screen once a new image slides in. And to achieve that, first I'm going to create a component with four variants, each of which will represent the header and subtitle text of each image that slides in. After creating our components, I'm going to switch to prototype mode and create a basic interaction between these variants. So to properly animate the variants, I'm just going to go through the animation and after delay of the slideshow that we have so that I can calculate exactly when we want our interactions of our text variants to show. So for the slideshow, we had an after delay of 2000 milliseconds and an animation of 500 milliseconds. That means it's going to take the slideshow to take 2500 milliseconds to completely um, show up and animate. It's after that complete animation process, then do we want to change our text. So I'm going to use an after delay of 2500 milliseconds and I want an instant transition or a dissolved transition for our text. After completely animating the interactions of these variants, what I'm going to do next is to change the color of the text so that we can have a good contrast between the dark background and the text layer. So the next thing we want to do is go to our assets panel and bring in our text. I'm going to just delete the current one and replace it with our component. After that, we can then prototype our design. So as we can see, the text animation and the slideshow animation still has a time lapse between them. So I think I'm going to use an instant animate rather than a dissolve and I'm going to tweak the animations a little more. The first thing I want to do is I want to replicate the smoothness between the first and the last animation on the slideshow. So I'm also going to add a fifth variant for our text component and I'm going to be replacing the first variant as the fifth variant. So what I'm trying to achieve here is to replicate the same pattern we used for our slideshow for the text animate because it seems like um, there is a time lapse and it's caused by the the timing that is the after delay between the first slideshow and the last slideshow so if you can replicate the same um the same effect or the same behavior as the slideshow then we can have a consistent animation
so finally this is the final design um thank you guys for watching i hope you enjoyed this video if you're interested in more videos like this please don't forget to like share subscribe and also turn on the notification bell so you get notified when i post my next video